All right, today I thought I'd do a video on some of the weirdness I get up to online. It's kind of funny. Um, so there's this website called Stack Exchange. It's like stackexchange.com. And it's a place that I go to for coding questions. That's what it started out as. It started out as like a website for asking questions when you stop coding. So you can say, I don't know why my code isn't working. And someone will post a response saying, ah, oh, well, this is why. So that's what they used to do. But then they opened up this whole new branch of like subjects. So it used to just be coding, but they added one for like physics. They added one for cooking. They added one for Dungeons and Dragons. They've added them for all sorts of stuff. And there's one that really piqued my interest, which is world building. Which is like, if you're writing a story and you don't know where that story should go. So like, you've got an idea, but you don't know how to justify that idea. From a literary sense, like making sure it's believable or whatever. Then you can go here and you can ask the question. Like one guy, when I first started going to this website, one guy was asking how zombie chariots would work if you were doing like chariot races in a post-apocalyptic future and you wanted the zombies to be the horses. How would you make sure that the zombies kept going around the track and not trying to eat the person who was on the chariot? So that's the kind of place that it is. And I've been going there for quite a while now, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to try and really challenge these guys. Because I'm not making a book. I'm not making a film. I'm not doing anything like that. But I wanted to come up with a concept that they would enjoy trying to come up with an answer for. So... My scenario that I came up with was the following. I'll just read my post out. <clears throat> it's called Prehistoric Messages to the Future. I'm one of the test subjects for a new device capable of sending an individual back to any point in history. I've been told that due to certain problems with the process, I'll arrive naked and so have no means of returning to the present. <clears throat> Meaning if I want to provide feedback and or data, I'll have to leave a message that will survive long enough to be picked up by the research teams of today. Some of the previous subjects have already accomplished this, <clears throat> but they've all been sent to relatively stable time periods where humanity was already well established. So they could get away with time capsules, hidden codes in the Bible, etc. <clears throat> Due to my skill set as an extreme survivalist, I'm being sent back to well before humanity had climbed out of the trees. They're aiming for the Mesozoic Era, or Mesozoic Era. This means dinosaurs, including T-Rex, and likely a whole host of other things, unseen by anyone. My mission is to A. Survive, <clears throat> and B. Leave a message that is likely to be found by my team in the present documenting when I arrived. If I can figure this out, they can possibly bring me back, along with anything else that may be of interest. This message will hopefully contain the first human account of dinosaur behavior, but we'll see what happens. Assuming I can stay alive, which method of storing a message would be the most likely to survive until the present, considering the Earth will be hit by a meteor sometime after I arrive? Not too soon after, I hope. If the message can be concealed in such a way that only my research team would be able to decipher it, that would be ideal, but is a secondary concern, for me at least. So, that's the question I asked. Uh, quite a lot of flavour text in there. Basically, I was asking... If you were getting sent back in time 65 million years to before the dinosaurs went extinct, and you wanted to leave a message for humanity to receive today, 
how would you do it? How would you have a message that was going to survive the meteor impact? <clears throat> Simply just survive. 65 million years is a long time. And also that your data would still be readable. But then I threw in the twist that you don't want anyone else to be able to read it apart from your research team. So you're going to have to encrypt it or something like that. And this got an overwhelming response. The amount of people who responded to this question is just ridiculous. Uh, <clears throat> what did this guy say? Play the longest game of telephone. <clears throat> Instead of sending one person back 64 million years, send 64,000 people back in 1,000 year increments. You could even send the same people back again and again if they are rescued fast enough. Each person would build their own thousand year monument and try to find the previous person's thousand year monument and add the old message to the new monument. As for the medium, it could be different every time, but I would recommend giant stones arranged in formations. And then he's got a link to Stonehenge. Uh, so that's a pretty interesting idea. You would end up with all these different temples around the world that all had the same message on them, although they would deteriorate over time. Um, my issue with that, and the reason why I didn't mark it as the right answer, which is something you do for rep points on the site, is people would be finding these monuments, for sure. Um, and there'd be no way to keep it secret. Someone else would find it, and then someone else would potentially translate it. So I couldn't really go with that one, which was a shame, because it's quite a good idea. Then some guy was like, find the message first. Before going back, search and find a message from your trip. Ensure that the outside layer has the fact that the message came from you, and only you, encoded on it somehow. It should also include directions on where to put it, and how to make it. The actual location you are sent to would be inside an inner layer, <clears throat> which you should not open prior to going back. Then go back, following the instructions on how to send the message back to yourself. In the present, once they have sent you back, they open the inner message and retrieve you after you in turn sent the message to them. So this is the kind of Novikov theory of time travel, which is that there is only one reality and you can't change the past because everything that you do in the past has already been done in your reality. You just might not have realized it yet. Um, Honestly, it's a bit of a cop-out, in my opinion. <clears throat> it's like, how should I do it? Well, you should do it however you did it, right? It's not it's not a technical answer to the question. It's just a, a little nuanced bit of trivia about one definition of time travel. So, yeah, I wasn't really buying that one, but it was quite interesting. Uh, one guy said, if you've already been sent back, you're basically dead. <laughs> If you haven't, decline the job. Even if you survive just breathing the air, you're going to have a rough time finding something you can both engrave and ensure won't decay over 65 million years. And then you'd have to stick it somewhere where it won't get crushed, burned, eaten, moved, drowned, or sucked under a tectonic plate and melted. That task is basically impossible. Even if you found and killed a dinosaur, and engraved its bones, and threw them in a tar pit, the odds that your message is found by scientists in the future are basically nil. Hundreds upon hundreds of dinosaurs died in tar pits. While science has recovered an impressive collection, it is reasonable, no, is it reasonable to assume everything that fell in has been pulled back out again? Probably not, I agree. And a tar pit is your best option. 
Every other fossil has undergone even more unlikely odds to get to the present. You'd have to kill and engrave the bones of a dinosaur every 15 minutes for 20 years and still not have a message survive. So that's true, I think. I don't think you could just rely on fossils to get a message through. I think it would be far too chance-based. But um, fossils seems like the obvious choice because it's something that we have today from the past. But uh, nowhere near reliable enough. One guy wrote a really good post. Um, he said, TLDR, you are on a suicide mission. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, you have a few overlapping strategies, but even if you land in the perfect place and get your message perfectly preserved, these are long odds. He said, <clears throat> number one, practice survival skills. You're going back with no tools, so spend some time in the modern era practicing how to convert natural elements to tools, how to shape stones into knives, axes, arrows, and spearheads, how to make bows and arrows and spears from trees as close to what we believe the Mesozoic era had, how to make fire, how to identify flint, how to trap animals. You're going to need these skills <clears throat> since you have no safe way to identify safe to eat plants once you arrive. Hopefully you can survive on the meat you can catch. <clears throat> Number two. Location, location, location. Hopefully your time machine can place you with some precision. You will have no landmarks when you arrive. Even the mountains will be vastly different 65 million years ago. The continents won't occupy the same latitude and longitude, <clears throat> nor have the same coastlines. So you won't be able to place yourself on that world in a known location on this world once you're there. But you need to find a place that's known for fossils. But you just said that's not possible. <clears throat> Utah, California's tar pits, England's Jurassic Coast. I didn't even know we had a Jurassic Coast. Find an area where fossil hunting is popular because that improves your odds of your message being found. Number three, make your message large. The larger your object, the greater the odds someone will see it when digging for fossils. Seems reasonable. Make your message durable. Find some flint or similar rock and chip away at your message in a block of hard wood or stone. Or if you think you'll have the time, try to make it in clay and sunbake that clay to harden it. Number five, double bag it. Take your clay, wood, or rock message and coat it thoroughly in tree sap. Multiple coatings will be required, but build up a thickness and sunbake it as much as you can to try and dry it out. An amber coating will help prevent damage to your engraving and make sure the source material doesn't degrade. You can also embed some of your hair to provide DNA samples. This will prove you left the message and not anyone else. Number six, triple bag it. Wrap your tree sap coated message in leaves and tie it off in a bundle. Then drop your package in a tar pit or push it deep into a mud pit. Leave lots of footprints as those get fossilized too. Number seven, rinse and repeat. Try to bury more than one copy in more than one location. Don't rely on a single message to survive and be discovered. Makes sense. That's basically what the other guy was saying. Number eight. Don't get eaten or trampled or gored. While you're busy doing all the above, make sure no predator decides to eat you for elevensies. And no herbivore tramples you in fear slash defensiveness. That's kind of important. So that was pretty good. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, there's all sorts of answers here. I got like, how many answers did I get? 21. 21 different people wrote answers to my question. So now I'm thinking, hmm. I've got a pretty solid concept here. 
<clears throat> so I'm going to try and come up with another question that's like a follow-on question to ask them that will hopefully be somewhere in the same level of interest. And then if I can do enough of these questions in a row, in theory, they'll write a book for me. This is the theory. You know? So, yeah. I'm going to see <clears throat> see what happens with that. It's just a fun little fun little website that I mess about with. It's quite interesting if you've got a creative mind and you want to try and um, help people out, I guess. Or even just for the <clears throat> intellectual exercise. Even just reading other people's answers is quite good because you get to kind of verify them in your mind. Like, does that make sense? Does it not make sense? Well, so I find it really good. <clears throat> so I thought I'd do a little video on that. Uh, this is 15 minutes, so I'm going to end it here. It's actually 16 minutes, but whatever. So, catch you later, guys.